Cigarette makers are fuming at the growth of the illegal tobacco market. They say it's stubbing out legitimate businesses and costing South Africa billions in excise duty. They also say unregulated tobacco is a severe hazard to consumers' health. Illicit cigarette sales saw phenomenal growth during lockdown when tobacco trade was banned. We're now joined by Shadrick CBC, chairperson for Black Tobacco Farmers Association. Thank you so much, Shadrick, for your time. A very good morning to you. Let's talk a little bit about this because it seems as though illicit cigarettes has been an ongoing problem for years on end further spiked obviously when we had uh, the lockdown of uh, COVID-19 during 2020 and now it looks as though the problem is not dissipating but that means that that entire um, uh, well situation that entire actual program itself is one that is very sophisticated the syndicates are sophisticated but it looks as though they must have help in order for them to last the long way in which they have so what's happening within the market what do we know so so far about the illicit trade market Thank you, Faith, for having me. Uh, Faith, uh, nothing much has uh, changed uh, as far as the market shares is concerned. You remember, this has been the work of the government that uh, banned the sale of cigarettes in 2020, mm. which in essence was giving the illicit market 100% market share. How then do you expect uh, the market to recover as smoothly as it is? It will never. And it needs uh, the law enforcement agencies to up their game to see to it that they scratch this uh, illicit wherever it appears, because uh, really it has uh, affected us a uh, big time as emerging uh, tobacco farmers. We are out of business. From 155 members that you used to have before lockdown, now we are left with 10. It's sure. disastrous. But CBC, then when it comes to um, the Black Tobacco Farmers Association, as you're saying that a lot of these uh, farmers are out of business, are there any opportunities for collaboration? Let's say with perhaps uh, the bigger farmers or the bigger market players um, as well, because it's sad to know that black farmers are feeling the severe brunt of illicit cigarette trades. Um, that means that there's not going to be jobs, and jobs means that there's no food on the table for many families in this country. So is there opportunities for collaboration? Yes, we are trying to work around that one. What we hope would happen eventually is to look at the export market because I think that will be the only option that is left now because locally there is nothing. The government has given the market just 100% back to the criminals. Just around how we crack down on this, I mean, how do you see us being able to crack down on this uh, problem. I mean, we're calling on law enforcement, but it looks as though the, it looks like the criminals just keep winning when it comes to illicit cigarette market. But how do we solve it? To be honest with you, Kate, is that uh, if there's a political will from the government side, they will be able to crack this. But now, seemingly, there's no willing from the government. And uh, at the big cost to us emerging uh, black uh, tobacco farmers. Sure. When you're saying that there's no political will, have you tried to speak, for example, with the likes of the Department of Trade and Industry, uh, tried to speak with the agricultural uh, department or even law enforcement themselves and seeing, guys, how far are we in being able to solve this problem? And, and what's been the response so far when you've interacted with some of these government um, officials? The only people that I can uh, make mention of uh, that uh, did uh, have an ear, it was uh, SARS. They did uh, have a discussion with us and uh, they were trying to do everything possible to assist. But they cannot do it alone. There's a lot of people that needs to be involved in order for this case to be taken out. Where are That's the cigarettes saying, coming yes. from? Do we know, Bab Shadrick? Where are the cigarettes coming from? I mean, who manufactures these illicit cigarettes? Are they manufactured locally in South Africa and then sold elsewhere? Are they coming in from other countries? Because the whole, the whole notion around illicit is because they're non-taxable, right? So they disappear off the system and they sold at a, at a really, really cheap amount to either tuck shops, puzzle shops, you name it, right? So, but, but where do they come from? If I may take you back... Uh... Case okay. in 2020 during lockdown, the legal uh, cigarette market was banned from uh, selling. But uh, every 10 
in the country, you found that they were, the police were confiscating a cigarette uh, from uh, outside the country. Yeah. Then you ask yourself, who opens those uh, floodgates for these people to easily come through the borders into South Africa? Because there are uh, law enforcement agencies around. How then they make it possible to come in if there is a political will? That's why I'm saying uh, there is no political will. But then that means that uh, more and more farmers will be feeling the brunt of it, doesn't it? And then before you know it, you'll have no black tobacco farmers that are actually working in this country and making some kind of profit. It's unfortunate because the most affected is the black emerging tobacco farmers because the, those commercial farmers have got some alternative markets to do their businesses. To us, it's going back to Q4 grants, which is unfortunate. I don't even know what to say to that. That just it sounds so heart-wrenching to even say that, you know, it means that we have to go back to, to grants. I'm hoping that government officials are listening to this cry um, by black uh, tobacco farmers so that they can actually do something about it. But, but uh, CBS is going to need a lot of border control. It's going to need proper law enforcement being stationed in our various borders who are not susceptible to taking bribes. These goods are getting into the country because people are taking profit or choosing money over actually protecting the Republic. And that means the Department of Home Affairs also needs to play a big role there. Have you tried to speak to them? We have tried to engage with every stakeholder that we can uh, reach up to. Uh, but it's always a talk show because uh, nothing tangible is happening on the ground. That's the worst part of it. We'll have to leave it there for this morning. Because Shall if... Speak? It, yeah. No, finish off your thoughts. Because if, serious, because if seriously the government were taking this thing serious, something should have happened long time ago. Even the mistake of the banning of the sale of cigarettes in 2020, it shouldn't have happened. Because they knew before then 42% market share was already in the hands of the criminals. But then if you give them 100%, what do you expect? I hear you loud and clear, and I'm hoping everybody can hear you loud and clear this morning. Sherry Sabisi, chairperson for the Black Tobacco Farmers Association. We have to leave it here this morning, but much appreciated for letting us know exactly what black farmers are actually contending with here when it comes to illicit cigarette trades.